para sa mga nangangarap na magkaroon ng Google Pixel Experience na abot kaya yung halaga dahil wala po tayong official na Google Pixel phones dito sa Philippines, huwag kayo mag kasi ito na po ang pinaka-abot kaya na phone ni Nothing. This is the Nothing 2A and I'm very happy to tell you guys na abot kaya na po talaga to ng mga Pinoy dahil at 18,999 pesos para sa base variant at 20,999 pesos naman para sa 12256, well, pwedeng-pwede nyo na itong mabili sa Digital Walker. At pag-usapan natin ng mas masinsinan kung bakit napakahalaga ng phone release na to para sa Philippine market after this quick unboxing. So tulad ng Nothing Phone 1 and Nothing Phone 2, yung unboxing experience natin with the Nothing Phone 2A is very minimal. You're basically just getting the phone, the charging cable, and wala pong charging brick na kasama dito. So just in case wala kayong charging brick sa bahay nyo, you will have to be prepared na bumili ng charging brick para sa Nothing Phone 2A. Na diretso na tayo sa looks ito. So this one has a very unique design. Ang tawag nila dito is Fresh Eyes. And makikita nyo, para talaga siyang mga mata dito, Medyo hawig siya ni Wally. Oh, ibang Wally yan. Wally, yun sa Disney. Yan, yan, yan. Yan yung sinasabi ko. Medyo hawig nito. And ang gusto ko talaga dito sa brand ng Nothing is that they really stick to the design language na gusto nilang ipakita sa inyo. That means the same pa rin yung back panel nito na meron tayong transparent back panel and medyo nakikita natin yung interiors but these are actually not the interiors that you can see. Parang ano lang siya, parang design pa rin siya. But this is the overall design language na makikita nyo sa mga products nila. Like this, the Nothing Ear 2, the Nothing Phone 2, Nothing Phone 1. It's all the same design language. And ang sabi kasi ni Carl Pay na ang consistent design language ay pinattern nila from Sony from before. But I do have to admit na yung design language ito is not for everyone. Merong magugustuhan to, merong nasa gitna, at meron namang talagang ayaw yung design language na to. So kung alin ka man doon, let me know in the comment section kung nagustuhan nyo ba yung design na to or talagang ayaw nyo. Na isang bagay na dapat nyo malaman sa back panel nito, although it looks like it's glass, it's actually just polycarbonate or plastic. Pero yung body nito has an aluminum frame. Pero yung unique thing here is that kahit na aluminum frame siya, hindi nyo makikita yung antenna bands. So, tinago nila dito sa frame mismo yung mga antenna bands. So, napakalinis ng design. Wala kayong makikita ang antenna bands all around its body. And of course, let's not forget, meron pa rin tayong glyph system dito. But for this one, medyo mas limited na yung glyph lighting dito compared to the Nothing Phone 2 and the Nothing Phone 1. Pero guys, bukod sa design ng Nothing 2A sa hardware, Ma-appreciate nyo rin na yung design na to translates to the software mismo. So this one has the Nothing OS on top of Android 14. And you can choose between the theme ng Nothing and also ng Android. And actually dito sa theme na ginagamit ko, naka-icon pack ako. So makikita nyo sobrang seamless na mga icons dito. It really matches the whole theme. Which is something that I really like sa approach ni Nothing pagdating sa take nila on an Android device. So you can customize this to align this with the theme ni Nothing. And one thing that you will notice right away kung galing ka sa mga China brands is the lack of bloatware. So this is where we can say na almost close to the Pixel experience itong Nothing. And what's the big deal about that? Well, that means wala talaga tayong bloatware na makikita dito aside from the Nothing X na app and of course, yung customization na pwede natin gawin with the Glyph system. But those are the only two things na nakita ko na pwede nating tawaging bloatware. The rest, walang pre-installed apps na nakakainis na kailangan pa natin tanggalin pag nag-set up tayo ng device. So you can use this right away and just install the essential applications na kailangan nyo. And since nabanggit ko yung Nothing X na application nila, it's actually an application that you can use 
para dito sa mga earphones nila. So, we have the Nothing Ear 2 dito. But you can also use this with their sub-brand na CMF and it will work just fine. And sobrang solid din ang integration nila with their earphones na para bang ecosystem thing na ito. And hopefully, we see more products from Nothing para mas ma-integrate pa natin with the ecosystem. Kasi it's an ecosystem that you will really love to use Kasi nga, walang bloatware, very smooth, and hindi siya buggy. And speaking more about the software experience, hindi lang po sa Nothing 2A, but with my experience with the Nothing 2 and the Nothing Phone 1, well, sobrang solid ng updates na binibigay ni Nothing para sa mga devices nila. And usually, makikita mo talaga yung rundown ng mga updates or kung ano man yung improvements na binibigay nila sa inyo. And I really like this approach para transparent talaga and alam natin kung ano yung mga in-enhance nila or in-improve nila or kung may mga tinanggal man silang features na obsolete na. Di tulad sa mga China brand na phones na usually yung mga updates and nilalabel lang nila as optimization about the camera pero hindi natin alam ko ano specifically in optimize nila so yun yung mga small details na i'm sure ma appreciate nyo rin pag nothing na ang gamit yung device now i'd love to tell you more about the nothing os but baka humaba na masyado yung video natin so let's move on to the performance so ang ginamit ni nothing dito is the mediatek dimensity 7200 pro so this one is a little bit enhanced version ng base na 7200. So that means meron mga optimizations here and there but also medyo tinaasan nila ng konti yung clock speed ng CPU. And pagdating sa Antutu benchmark, actually narinig ko si Carl Pay. Sabi niya na ang expected is dapat nasa around 700,000 Antutu benchmark points but yung nakuha ko dito at the beginning was around 640,000 Antutu benchmark points and then nung nag-retest ako recently after the update, umabot na ng 680,000 ng Tutu benchmark points. Now, just to give you some context para may idea kayo kung saan nyo pwedeng ikumpara to, that is better than the Snapdragon 778G na paborito natin dito sa channel, but less than the Dimensity 8100 na isa rin sa paborito natin dito sa Pinoy Tech Dad. So, nasa gitna siya ng Snapdragon 778G and the Dimensity 8100, which is really good for me para sa isang mid-range na device. Sa 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme Test naman, very decent yung nakuha nito na loop score, which can give you an indication na pwedeng-pwede nyo itong gamitin for gaming. Siyempre, hindi mawawala yung game test natin dyan, kahit na hindi ito ina-advertise as a gaming device. So, sinubukan natin to sa ilang games, Firelight 84, Genshin Impact, Call of Duty Mobile, Mobile Legends, at iba pa. So, simulan natin sa pinaka-intense right now, Farlight 84. So, lahat po ng graphical settings sinagad ko and I was pleasantly surprised na solid yung performance ito. And by the way guys, may game mode pala tayo para sa nothing 2A. And you just have to activate the dashboard para makita nyo yung FPS counter. So, makikita nyo dito na very smooth yung gaming experience ko with Farlight 84. Andiyan na po yung FPS counter natin so you can check. But overall, I'm very satisfied and I was able to enjoy my gameplay with Farlight 84 kahit na sagad lahat ng graphical settings. And uh, the best part about this is yung thermals nito. Kasi usually, pag mga gaming test, pag nakasagad lahat ng graphical settings, automatic yan. Around 45 degrees Celsius yung makukuha natin yung temperature pagdating sa Farlight 84. But here, umabot lang ako ng around 42 degrees Celsius. Consistent yun, guys. And that's a really good performance pagdating sa thermals. At syempre, na-curious agad ako na subukan to sa Genshin Impact and tingnan ko kung almost the same ba yung performance natin pagdating sa thermals. So, lahat po ng graphical settings, sinagad ko rin po for Genshin Impact. And yung thermals ito, nasa 42 degrees Celsius lang din. So, kung yung testing lang ang pagbabasihan ko, Talagang solid yung thermals itong Nothing 2A. But it's not all about the thermals lang kasi smooth din yung gameplay natin with Genshin Impact. And although yung FPS natin nasa around 40 something lang. Pagdating sa Call of Duty Mobile, ito naman yung graphical settings na nakuha ko. And very smooth yung gameplay experience ko with this one. 60 FPS is guaranteed kasi super light lang naman patakbuhin ng game na to. Mobile Legends, of course, it's the same thing. But the downside is that wala pa tayong ultra frames dito. So overall, I would say kahit hardcore gamer ka, may enjoy nyo maglaro dito sa Nothing 2A. At lalo naman kung casual gamer ka kasi you don't have to worry na bababaan mo pa yung graphical settings para lang sa performance. Kasi you can set all the graphical settings at high and you won't have to worry 
na magkakaroon tayo ng performance hit. Now, just a quick note lang para sa mga hardcore gamers dyan, yung touch sampling rate nito is only 240Hz. So, baka makulangan kayo just in case. But moving on, let's talk about the display on this. The one thing that I really love is yung equal bezels nito. And it makes the whole phone really look good. And lalo na sa display niya na meron tayong AMOLED na 120Hz refresh rate. Sobrang goods manood dito ng mga videos. Whether you're just watching YouTube, lalo na ko Netflix kasi naka Widevine Level 1 na to, which means full HD resolution yung pwede natin mapanood. Now, the only downside for now is that wala siyang HDR capability pagdating sa Netflix, pero meron naman siyang HDR pagdating sa YouTube. So I'm sure if they want to, pwede nilang lagyan to ng HDR capability sa Netflix through a software update. Na kung meron mang aspeto pagdating sa display niya na medyo nakulangan ako, maybe it's with the color profile kasi meron lang tayong dalawa, alive at saka standard. So, medyo nakakabitin lang just in case mahilig ka mag-tweak sa itsura ng display mo. Pero from experience, ganito kasi talaga yung standard pagdating sa mga stock Android na devices. Pero siguro that's just me nitpicking para may extra pa akong masabi sa inyo kasi maganda talaga yung display nito guys eh. But overall, I really love the display on this. This is close to flagship level na quality the display. And I say close dahil kulang lang ito ng LTPO. Now, pagdating sa cameras ng Nothing 2A, sisimplihan lang natin. Dahil meron na tayong dalawang lenses, meron tayong ultra-wide, and a 24mm na main lens. So, I'm gonna be straightforward. Are the cameras here good? I would say yes. Maganda po yung cameras nito. Now, the only thing that you need to take note of is number one, medyo aggressive pa sila sa sharpness dito, but I'm sure this is something that they will fix through a software update. And number two, medyo mataas yung saturation in the beginning, but actually, nagkaroon na sila ng software update dito, pero I feel like medyo konting tweak pa, and they will get the saturation na tama na talaga yung timpla. And then, yung highlights ito, medyo aggressive minsan. But those things, I trust, e eh, ma-adjust lahat to through software updates. Kasi kung papanoorin nyo yung YouTube channel ng nothing, makikita nyo doon na consistent talaga silang nag-update para sa software nila, lalo na sa camera. So throughout your usage dito sa Nothing 2A, you will see a lot of updates and improvements pagdating sa camera software. But overall, I'm very satisfied sa quality na nakukuha ko with the Nothing 2A. I was pleasantly surprised kasi I was expecting na siguro medyo in-nerf nila to compared to the Nothing Phone 2 kasi maganda yung quality ng cameras ng Nothing Phone 2 eh. So medyo mababa yung expectations ko pagdating sa Nothing 2A na cameras but lo and behold, very sharp yung images, very vibrant and colorful and it's something that you can post right away sa social media accounts nyo. Yung selfie camera naman to is decent. I would say medyo aggressive rin pagdating sa sharpness, sobrang harsh ng itsura ng skin ko dito. Pero may beautification filter ka naman na pwedeng gamitin dito to make your face look softer. Kasi again, medyo harsh yung processing pagdating sa selfie camera nila. Now, onto the video side of things. Meron tayong 1080p 60fps sa selfie camera. Mamaya, papakita ko yung samples. And then, 4K 30fps pagdating sa rear camera. And ito naman yung sample na nakikita nyo na very stable so far yung mga video footages na nakuhanan ko. And the quality is actually really good as well. Now, para naman sa video side of things ng selfie camera, ito yung sample natin. So, makikita nyo na Nasa softer side yung video quality natin if you compare it sa photo ng selfie camera. And I actually like it. And 1080p 60fps yung quality natin. And so far, so good. And this is something that I would say you would be able to use for vlogging. Lalo na kung may sapat kayong lighting kasi nasa studio setting tayo. And yun, siguraduhin nyo lang na may enough light kayo para hindi mag-degrade yung quality ng video nyo. So what do you guys think about the selfie video? The only problem that I have with the ultra wide for now is that hindi pa nagmamatch yung color science ng ultra wide versus the main lens. So they will definitely have to adjust this as well through a software update. Okay, finally battery discussion naman tayo. Meron tong 5,000 milliamp hours of battery capacity and 45 watts of fast charging. Wala po tayong wireless charging na available dito but that's okay. This is a mid-range device after all but you can expect all day battery life para dito sa Nothing 2A. This one has a 4 nanometer na chipset which means power efficient po siya. And from my experience na almost 2 weeks kong ginagamit tong phone na to, sobrang solid ng battery life nito. Hindi ako nagkakaroon ng battery anxiety na tipong kukulangin ako ng battery. This one can last you again for a whole day. Depende na lang po talaga sa usage nyo. Kung heavy gaming ang gagawin nyo, of course, expect nyo na medyo kukulangin talaga kayo within the day. But kung casual use lang, 
sure na sure, lampas pa ng one day yung pwede nyo magamit dito sa Nothing 2A. Now, before we end this video, gusto ko lang i-share yung iba pang mga bagay na dapat nyo malaman about na Nothing Phone 2A. Number one, meron tong IP54 na water and dust resistance. Number two, dual 5G capable po itong phone na to. Number three, naka-dual speakers din po ito. And number four, the most important thing sa software update. So meron tayong three OS updates dito. So that means pwede to hanggang Android 17 guaranteed and four years of security patches. So that's a long time support para sa isang mid-range device na usually pinapabayaan lang ng mga China brands. So with that said guys, this is something that I would highly, highly recommend para sa lahat. Yes, sa lahat mismo. For casual users, for those who like to play games on their devices, this is something that you can definitely use. And lalo na kung sawa ka na sa mga bloatware ng mga China brands, highly recommended ko talaga to guys. I can't say it enough. Lahat po ng links na sa description box. You can get this sa physical store, sa Digital Walker. May local warranty po tayo. Hindi po ako magsasawang i-recommend ito sa inyo dahil this is better than most of the China brands out there. Lalo na kung isasali natin yung software. Because not everything is all about the chipset. It's a perfect match of software integration plus the hardware. So very good po yung chipset na nilagay nila dito, lalo na kung thermals ang usapan. So I'm very happy talaga for the Filipino consumers na nagkaroon tayo ng nothing to A dito sa atin and pwede nyo nang mabili na abot kaya. So hopefully nakatulong tong video na to sa pagde-decide nyo kung ano ba yung dapat nyo bilhin na phone. And kung hindi pa kayo makapag-decide, may mga videos po ako dyan na ilalagay na I'm sure makakatulong sa inyo. So hanggang sa susunod, ako nga pala ulit si Janus ng Pinotech Dad. Kita-kita ulit tayo. Yeah,